January 11, 2010. Uh, with respect to appeal number 2824, appeal of Mr. Samantha Joseph, owner of property located at 117 Garrett Avenue, Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, 19010, regarding a validity challenge to the enactment of Ordinance 2009-28 as inter alia, violative of sections 607, 608, 609, and 610 of the Municipalities Planning Code, MPC. The Board of Commissioners unlawfully delegated its authority to draft a new zoning ordinance in violation of section 607 of the MPC, or in the alternative, failed to comply with or unlawfully delegated the posting and mailing requirements of section 609 of the MPC. The Board of Commissioners violated the procedural and substantive due process rights of the appellant herewith and all other citizens of Radnor Township by unlawfully delegating to an unrepresentative and undemocratic steering committee its planning and legislative functions. Mr. Toner. May I just interrupt first? Yes. And, uh, sure. Oh, yes. My apologies. Before we begin, let's let Kathy speak. And then. Okay, Kathy. All right. I, I just wanted to say I need to recuse myself, unfortunately, because I reviewed this plan several times before the Delaware County Planning Commission, of which I'm also a member. Uh, so I don't think I sh uh, can participate tonight. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. John. The board met uh, in executive session uh, uh, at my request to uh, allow me to explain to the board uh, some concerns I have about the board's jurisdiction over issues that may be raised in these appeals, uh, particularly uh, procedural issues. Uh, and I gave my thoughts, but I think uh, uh, what I'd like to hear is what issues does the applicant expect to uh, address tonight and pursue tonight so that we the board can be in a better position to react to that mr. Toner sure um, in, in our notice of appeal we raise essentially three issues one a, a pure procedural issue challenging whether notice is properly mailed posted and um, and published according to the requirements of the municipalities planning code in light of subsequent conversations with uh, Mr. Ryan and also Mr. Rice, we're willing to stipulate tonight that those are issues uh, properly before the Court of Common Pleas here in Delaware County. But we do have two substantive issues that we believe warrants a full factual hearing this evening, uh, primarily being whether the new Garrett Hill Zoning District constitutes special legislation, and also whether this new ordinance should have been drafted by the Planning Commission as opposed to this uh, group of citizens according to Section 607 of the MPC. So we would like to proceed on our two substantive grounds and then transfer the procedural matters to the Court of Common Pleas. Uh, Mr. Toner, uh, can you explain uh, in more detail what you mean by special legislation, what your claim is on that? Sure. Our claim in regard to special legislation is that the Garrett Hill Zoning District was drafted to specifically conflict with the requirements of the 2003 Comprehensive Plan drafted by uh, Radnor Township. It, uh, it's, it focuses in not on a single parcel, but on a very small segment of Radnor Township and zones it totally contrary to what was legislatively determined to be in the best interest of all citizens of this community. We believe it fits within the understanding, the common law understanding of special legislation in Pennsylvania. Okay. Uh, and the other uh, 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 provision on the, the zoning ordinance, are your, your position is that, uh, can you explain to me in more detail what your position is on, on you know, the 606 to 607 as opposed to 608, 69, 610? Explain in more sure. detail what um, you mean by that. And let me just, let me just read the uh, pertinent provision. This is section 607 of the MPC provides, the text and map of the proposed zoning ordinance, as well as all necessary studies and surveys preliminary thereto, shall be prepared by the planning agency of each municipality upon request by the governing body. Now, what citations this section really brings up is whether 
we're dealing with here tonight a new zoning ordinance which would need to be drafted by the Planning Commission or an amendment to the zoning ordinance which could rightfully be drafted by really anyone as long as it's properly passed by the Board of Commissioners. And we believe that the testimony tonight uh, will, will demonstrate that this is an entirely new zoning district drafted without really any reference to pass applicable C1, 2, and 3 provisions for this two-street commercial corridor. What? So, Go ahead. So this, is, this was a, a new ordinance that needed to be drafted by the Planning Commission, not by a group of private citizens. But why isn't that issue procedural? Why is that a substantive issue rather than a procedural issue? This, this, I, we believe this goes to the substantive merit of the ordinance itself. Procedural, I, I, procedural goes to the posting, uh, the publication, the actual procedures used uh, to provide notice of a new ordinance. This goes to whether the ordinance in and of itself is valid, which we believe is a substantive matter. Now, unfortunately, with recent amendments to the MPC, this is the type of issue which would have traditionally been argued together before the Zoning Hearing Board. But because of the new uh, amendments to the MPC, they've drawn the clear distinction between substantive and procedural matters without really clearly defining the difference between substantive and procedural. We, we believe whether an ordinance was properly drafted in the first place, whether it was the proper body drafting the ordinance, it really goes to substantively whether it's a proper ordinance. I guess my response to that, if I may, Mr. Chairman, is to me a procedural challenge distills down to the ordinance would be a valid ordinance and would be enforceable but for some mistake in the procedure. In other words, if the ordinance had been drafted and done right, the substance of what the, or, you know, what the ordinance does to the land that it applies to would be uh, accepted uh, under Pennsylvania law. To me, a substantive challenge is that, is that no matter how uh, meticulous one is with the procedure and how perfectly one squares the corner on notice, hearings, uh, sending a copy to the library, sending a copy to the Delaware County Planning Commission, and so forth, uh, the ordinance uh, could not uh, be passed. Uh, uh, and you know, give you an example: if an ordinance uh, 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 impermissibly uh, excludes uh, 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 religious institutions from the municipality or a particular religious uh, institution, uh, it doesn't matter how uh, pr meticulous the procedure is. Not only does that violate federal law, but that also violates uh, the laws of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. But on the other hand, if a decision is made to zone a property from CO to C2, and it's not a spot zone or an exclusionary zone or something like that, uh, the only problem is that there is a procedural uh, uh, omission. Uh, but that ordinance would, would be upheld if it were passed with a proper procedure. I see that as procedural. and I. Uh, I share with uh, the chair that it seems to me the issue of whether this is an am amendment or whether this is an original ordinance and the procedures that are required for each one is totally procedural. I don't see that as a substantive issue. If the ordinance could be passed but for a mistake with the procedure, uh, if the ordinance would be enforced but for a mistake with the procedure, which I see is the essence of your argument, I think it's a procedural uh, challenge, uh, and the board used to have jurisdiction over procedural challenges, but the amendments to the MPC in the summer of 2008 clearly removed that jurisdiction uh, from zoning boards. We don't have that anymore. Do you have any response? Well, I mean, we're really getting to the heart of where this ordinance in and of itself it is a valid ordinance. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe the question of whether it was even drafted in the first place properly doesn't go to the procedurally getting it from the drafting table into, leg into uh, the, the law books. It goes to whether it, in it is, in and of itself, a valid zoning ordinance. And here... Well, I, I think as you, character as you distilled the issue is whether or not the ordinance should have been drafted by the Planning Commission or by somebody else. And that, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling w with trying to understand how, who drafted it 
reflects on the, the substance or the merits of the ordinance? Because as opposed to its procedure. Every warrant is supposed to reflect um, the provisions of the comprehensive plan, the mm -hmm. general health, safety, and welfare of all citizens in a municipality. Okay. And zoning is supposed to be municipal wide. Here, I don't think you're hearing any argument tonight that this was focused on this one particular area. We weren't talking about uh, comprehensive zoning, implementing a comprehensive plan. We were talking about the drafting by a group of private citizens to meet their private needs. And I don't believe that goes to procedure. I believe it goes to the substance of the, of the law itself. But the MPC envisions ordinances being drafted by individuals. The only requirement, if it doesn't come from the Planning Commission originally, is it has to be sent to the Planning Commission for a 30-day opportunity for the Planning Commission to comment. They don't even have to for, uh, comment under the MPC. For, uh, or, for amendments, well, not for entirely new ordinances. Can you show me case law? Because there are, there are lots of ordinances, frankly, that are there, are, there are form ordinances which municipalities take and then they tailor it to their needs and play with the districts, but the original ordinance, uh, uh, you know, comes out of a, you know, planning guide or some such. Is there a case that says that only the planning commission can scriven the entire ordinance uh, uh, from uh, scratch and can't refer to models or to submissions? Well, I, I'd like to direct the board's attention to uh, Rickard v. Lattimore Township Board of Supervisors. That's 896 A2D 1086. In that case, they note that the embassy does not define or otherwise clarify what critical distinctions mark the difference between a wholly new ordinance subject to the requirements of Section 607 and 608 versus an amendatory ordinance subject to requirements of 609. And reasoning that where changes to an existing ordinance are, excuse me, um, I apologize, are broad and numerous, it is appropriate to characterize that legislation as a new zoning ordinance rather than simply an amendment. Now here, we're not talking about revising or amending uh, particular provisions of the C1 district or C3 district. We're talking about entirely new area bulk regulations entirely new use regulations. We're, we're talking about starting over from scratch at the two street commercial corridor at Garrett Hill. I think this clearly falls within the record understanding of the distinction between a wholly new ordinance and a mandatory ordinance. Okay, but why I'm still not understanding, and, and I apologize if I'm seeming dense, but I'm still not understanding why this becomes a substantive issue as opposed to a procedural issue. Why? I'm still not understanding why, because it's a new ordinance, because it was not drafted by the Planning Commission, how that reflects on the merits, whether why, why that has any bearing on the merits of the ordinance, as opposed to its the procedure by which it was adopted. Well, I think we're just going not to the procedure by which it was adopted, but the procedure by which it was drafted, and um, the intent of the drafters of the ordinance. Now, even I'm having a hard time. I still, I don't see why this would not be a procedural issue. You know, I mean, it's still, it's still how the ordinance, or how the zoning ordinance was was ultimately either delegated, as you call it, or drawn. It's still, it's still a procedure. How it was done, not necessarily. You know, what you're after is to change, to, to go after something that's that's really how the, how it was drawn up, not not the ordinance itself. But we're asking I for. See it. We're asking for a legal interpretation, whether this is a new ordinance or a mandatory ordinance. This type of legal interpretation is a substantive matter. Well, I, I'm looking at your addendum A to your appeal, which pr it, uh, it says relief requested and or basis for appearing before the zoning hearing board. And I'm not finding an interpretation request. So well, we're citing right to section 607 of the MPC in mm -hmm. the first sentence of our uh, addendum A. We're claiming it's uh, substantively and procedurally invalid. I mean, this is, a, this is a notice provision. I, I think we've clearly put the public on notice that we're making both substantive and procedural validity challenges. I, I'm not aware of any law that requires such specificity as to going into thorough legal citations and discussions of applicable cases. I don't cases. think there was any suggestion that citations were necessary in the, in, in, by, in the, by in the notice. Isn't delegation more of a procedure issue? Did you say, and you say it twice here. 
you know, you're, you're challenging the, the unlawful delegation of its authority, right? And um, what the other place you say? And the unlawful posting and mailing requirements. Well, the delegation goes to both the special legislation argument and the new ordinance, a mandatory ordinance provision. But isn't that procedures? Well, certainly not special legislation. I, I don't, special legislation clearly is a common law concept that would be substantive. Um, in the zoning context, though, special legislation is legislation aimed at a particular uh, uh, landowner designed to frustrate something that it is known the landowner wants to do. Uh, it conflicts with the master plan. Uh, there's no requirement. In fact, there's case, buckets of case law to the contrary that requires a zoning ordinance to conform to the master plan. The master plan is an advisory document. It's not a statute that prohibits uh, different or contradictory uh, uh, decisions later on. Uh, uh, variants uh, from the master plan is something that you might look at, for example, in spot zoning is something to consider, but uh, uh, that had certainly hasn't been alleged here. But one can vary with the plan. Is Are you alleging that this legislation was aimed at your client to prevent your client from doing something that your client is doing or has well, made made it clear that your client intends to do? And I'll, and I'll differ with um, your basic proposition that special legislation has to be aimed at one particular lot or one particular parcel or one particular owner. Uh, I think that the case law demonstrates that special legislation concerns small areas, not necessarily individual particular parcels. Here we're talking about a very small, discrete area of Brander Township, the Two Street uh, Garrett Hill Commercial Corridor. All these areas have been targeted for complete rezoning. I believe uh, this really is a prima facie case of special legislation. Small zoning amendments are done all the time. Uh, you know, you divide the line and put a few properties from one zoning classification into another. Uh, I have to disagree with that. I mean, I think special legislation, which is a very narrow concept in the law, uh, and it's a very difficult uh, case to prove, is, you know, the, the paradigm situation would be, imagine there's a property that's owned commercial office. It's vacant. Somebody buys it and announces their intention to build an office building. So the municipality immediately railroads through a zoning amendment, uh, zoning the thing to a residential thing, and it's clear that the sole motive of that was to stop that property from being developed as an office. And it's very tough to prove the sole motive thing, but in, in situations uh, uh, like that, conceivably, that would be held to be special legis legislation. There was actually a case out of Philadelphia in the 50s where uh, uh, somebody wanted to put in a use and city council was good enough to say the purpose of this ordinance is to stop this use uh, at such and such a property. And, uh, you know, so the city kind of did their work for them. But that's, in my view, what special legislation is. Uh, there are other, you know, that it, it has to be aimed at something your client is doing or wants or has announced that they want to do, uh, not just, you know, the client doesn't like, you know, the landowner. And it's not just, you know, your client, it's any landowner in the district. You know, the fact that you would rather the ordinance have not been passed because you'd like the flexibility to do other things in the future certainly doesn't make it special legislation. Well, in addition to the the, the merits, I guess, of the, of the special legislation argument, I'm not sure that the special legislation issue was raised in the appeal and advertised. I would agree with that. So I'm. Sorry. If I could. Can I address a few issues? Just, may, I, may I ask Mr. Toder a question before we, we, we get this more complicated? Absolutely. Something very simple. Just to phrase this from a different perspective. If you had no arguments with the publication, with the posting, with the mailing, if the ordinance had been drafted by the Planning Commission, if everything had been complied with by the commissioners exactly as it's supposed to be done, would there be anything wrong with the substance of this ordinance? Is there something unconstitutional or against Pennsylvania law in the body of this ordinance? Or is it all about the way it was done at some level? Well, I, I believe you're raising a couple 
interrelated issues, and I just want to first address. No, it's a really simple question. Well, if the planning commission had drafted this ordinance, they would have followed the guiding principles of the comprehensive plan. We don't know what they would have done, but assume they had done that. Assume this legislation hit your desk as a lawyer and had been, you had no objection with anything in the way it arrived there. It became the law of this township. Is there anything wrong with this? Does it violate someone's rights to do something or discriminate unfairly against someone? Is there anything wrong with the substance of the ordinance? Is it a bad ordinance? Well, it significantly impairs commercial property owners' uh, vested fundamental rights to use their properties as it's currently zoned. In other words, you're not pleased with the contents of the ordinance. Well, that doesn't tell me whether there's something wrong with it. In other words, is it how it was done or is it what was done? We're trying to figure that out honestly and in good faith. Yeah, it, is your it, argument with how it was done, which it sounds like, or what the product, the end product was? I'm, I'm not saying whether you're pleased or not when I say your argument. Is there something wrong with it legally? Well, I, I think the probably focus of our argument is how it was done. Um, the fact that it wasn't drafted by the Planning Commission, the fact that it was drafted by individuals um, with obvious private self-interest. And isn't that really a procedural issue? In other words, as much as we may want to hear or determine this case, aren't we really lacking jurisdiction because of that? It's the how you're talking about. Well, I, I think intent of the drafters goes to special legislation whether this really was drafted. Well, please don't involve that yet, because I never saw any of that in, in, in the application or in the advertisement. Please, let's, let's put that issue aside for a second, the special legislation. I'm just strictly talking about the issue, are we talking about a substantive issue or a procedural issue? And it sounds like it's all about the how, not the what. That's what I, we have, to, we need to know that. We need to figure that out. We're not challenging any subset today of the Garrett Hill Zoning District. We're challenging its nonconformity with the comprehensive plan, the way it was enacted, who enacted it, the intent behind those who enacted the ordinance. That is the substance. And substance. Sir, my, hum my humble reaction to that is you're talking about procedural issues. That's my humble opinion. I, I've got a question. I don't, and this is, I'm, I'm not gonna be terribly technical about this, but I don't understand what it matters as to who, uh, writes it up and gives it to the planning commission who then say this is exactly what we would write if we were sat down and wrote it and they adopt it. it well, I think the intent of section 607 where it draws a distinction between the mandatory and new ordinances, if you are going to make minor revisions to a zoning ordinance, then as in a validity challenge um, where you draft, a, you provide a proposed amendment to the ordinance, if you're a developer moving in, you're seeking to have you know, a new use brought into the area. You provide a proposed amendment. Um, that is something that's not fundamentally changing the comprehensive planning of the community. We're talking about smaller areas, minor deviations. But here, when, when you are drafting entirely new use area bulk regulations, we're talking about the need for comprehensive planning, long-term thought, not just about Garrett Hill, but about Radnor Township, how uh, Garrett Hill interrelates with the Wayne Business District, the need to have high density residential around the uh, mass transit lines, the need to bring in community parking lots, all issues that really were the focus of the 2003 comprehensive plan. And then when particular individuals did not like the focus of the comprehensive plan, they decide to completely ignore it and not tinker with the uh, zoning ordinances to C1, 2, and 3 districts. They decide they're just going to start over from scratch. They're going to draft entirely new zoning legislation. They're going to do a new zoning ordinance. There is no requirement that I'm aware of uh, that requires the comprehensive plan to be amended or redone as a predicate towards uh, a rezoning of an area, even a detailed or intricate one. Well, I'm aware of no such uh, 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 requirement. I direct your attention to Section 303, Subsection D of the MPC which sets the allowable deviations from the comprehensive uh, plan. And provides zoning ordinances adopted by municipalities shall generally be consistent with the municipal comprehensive plan. If a municipality amends its zoning ordinance in a matter not generally consistent with its comprehensive plan, it shall concurrently amend its comprehensive plan in accordance with Article 3. Here, there, there's no 
uh, amendment or attempt to amend the comprehensive plan. There's just an entire deviation from the comprehensive plan with this new, entirely new Garrett Hill Zoning District. Mr. Rice, did you want to make a comment? Well, let's read another section of Section 303. Uh, 303C. Notwithstanding any other provision of this Act, no action by the governing body of a municipality shall be invalid, nor shall the same be subject to challenge or appeal on the basis that such action is inconsistent with or fails to comply with the provision of a comprehensive plan. That's been the law for since 1969. You can't substantively, and they haven't filed a substantive challenge yet, challenge a zoning ordinance amendment or a zoning ordinance on the basis of inconsistency with comprehensive plan. That section that Mr. Toner read is a relatively new section, it was part of the Governor Ridge's multi-municipal planning efforts of about eight or nine years ago that held some carrots out for municipalities to get together and do multi-municipal planning. But subsection C in 303 was never changed. That was left in there. That's something that um, has been the law, as I said, since the MPC was enacted. Um, the, the thing that I think Mr. Toner is missing is um, the distinction between what's procedural and what's substantive. Section 916.1 of the MPC, validity of ordinance, substantive questions. A. A landowner who on substantive grounds desires to challenge the validity of an ordinance or map or any provision thereof which prohibits or restricts the use of development of land in which he has an interest shall submit the challenge either, and then you can go to the zoning hearing board or you file a curative amendment with the governing body. But the, the operative language is in here, a provision which prohibits or restricts the use or development of land. Um, there's nothing in this appeal. There's nothing in the legal ad for tonight's hearing. Um, there's no notice to anybody that there's a substantive issue. Substantive issue is spot zoning. Um, you don't provide for a certain use in the municipality. Could be special legislation. Um, there are substantive issues, but special legislation is nowhere to be found in this appeal, in this particular case. Those words, I mean, there's a, it's a term of art that the Supreme Court has recognized in very few cases over the last 50 years, and it does involve targeting a particular piece of property, a particular development, in an effort by a municipal body to take away that property owner's right to do something. Um, so that, uh, I mean, it's substantive, hasn't been raised tonight. The, um, the other just to rebut some of the other issues here, I think what you've heard is two things. That it's special legislation because there's only a small part of the township being targeted, the Garrett Hill Zoning District with this amendment. And then on the other hand, you're hearing this is an entirely new zoning ordinance. Therefore, 607 should apply. Doesn't make any sense. Um, entirely new zoning ordinance and 607 and 608 in the MPC and one of the cases that's been cited here is Lattimore, and I'd suggest that everybody read all of Lattimore, because I actually brought Lattimore with me. And um, Lattimore says that although there's no bright line rule as to what's a new or an amendment, the court then says, logically, it would seem that all zoning legislation after the adoption of the first ordinance is an amendment. <coughs> so unless you're doing a totally new comprehensive plan you're gutting everything that's on the books in a township, and you're totally redoing your zoning ordinance. And that doesn't happen very often in Pennsylvania. Everything else is an amendment. And if it's an amendment, then the requirements that have to be met, and I know I'm arguing the procedural issues, uh, even though you don't have jurisdiction, but someone's going to make a transcript of this uh, argument, I, I assume. Um, then you go to 609 and 610, which are amendments. And 609 says the procedure in 607 
all that other stuff that's been argued tonight by Mr. Toner, that the Planning Commission has to do it, they have to do studies, is optional if it's an amendment. So you can't have it both ways. You can't say special legislation because it's a small 60 properties, uh, I've been told by Mr. Borman, or 65 properties uh, on one hand and say it's special and then on the other hand say it's a totally new zoning ordinance when you're only doing a small part of the township. There's 8,800 parcels in Radnor Township. Um, so they want to have it both ways in order to get by the problem that they have, which is it's a procedural challenge. It's got to be filed in the Delaware County Court of Common Pleas. Um, Act 40 of 2008 made that clear. The legislature, this is their second or third attempt to try to fix the Glen Gary problem of procedural challenges. The first time they tried it, that was found to be unconstitutional. This is the second time they've tried to fix it, and they decided that because of the nature of procedural challenges that are being filed around the state, they should go to the Court of Common Pleas. And that's where we should be. Um, I don't want to belabor this, but I, uh, I, I do intend, and if now's the time to do it, make a motion that the Zoning Hearing Board dismiss this appeal. Before we consider that motion, Mr. Turner, would you like to respond? Oh, I do note that um, Council's unable to cite to one case for the proposition that special legislation is a procedural issue. There, there's no basis. I think he actually said it was a substantive well, he, issue. He said if that, it's a substantive issue, then we have the right here tonight to create a record. It hasn't been raised. You that, can't, that's our problem. You can't, claim, you can't file a procedural challenge and then come in and say, oh, I really meant spot zoning, or I really meant a, a de facto challenge to your zoning ordinance. You can't do that. Um, I mean, there's no notice to anybody that that's in play until tonight. Um, and the municipality, and, and again, if you go back to 916.1, that I think answers Mr. Cutler's question, which is what is substantive, and it, it's a substantive issue only when there's a provision which restricts the use or development of land. There's something about the ordinance that's been enacted that is unconstitutional, uh, and it restricts or unduly restricts what you want to do with your property. And that's not their case. They haven't filed that case yet. In this case, we're talking about zoning from C1 commercial to the most restrictive residential district. If you're talking, I don't think it's fair to say that there's no argument that this is not a restriction on someone's uh, right to use their property. It clearly, is when you're rezoning from commercial to restrictive residential. Right. And then I, I do want to address you know, the substance of our notice of appeal. The last sentence says the Board of Commissioners violates the procedural and substantive due process rights of the applicant herewith and all other citizens of Radnor Township. We're not just raising a procedural issue. We reference the fact that we're raising a substantive issue. We reference the fact we're challenging the matter in which it was enacted. This is a basic notice requirement. Citizens ought know that this is being challenged as unconstitutional, uh, substantive, in, in, substantively invalid ordinance. This is more than enough to provide notice, and uh, there's no citation to case law to stand for you know, another proposition that we have not, in fact, provided enough notice to the citizenry of the content of what's going to be argued here tonight. Okay. John, is special legislation, when it's found to exist, found to be a uh, violation of substantive due process rights? No, it is a substantive uh, uh, violation, but special legislation, again, is a very narrow area of law where a zoning ordinance is hastily uh, enacted to stop, uh, it's aimed at a particular landowner to restrict development on that landowner's property, okay? And so that would have to be, and has to be the sole purpose of it. We're arguing questions and of fact that we have a right to establish a factual record on. Well, how is, what is, what use is your client being denied here? My clients are being denied the, the rezoning of their property the ability to use their property for commercial purposes, the restrictive residential zoning requirements. They have a particular project right now that is, that is, is being uh, uh, thwarted? That's being thwarted in particular? Now, does, this, does, it, does your client have a particular thing that they want to build or use the property for that has now been taken away by this zoning? Has he filed zoning permits 
or building permits for a new project? Is that what you're asking? Does he have anything in mind? Well, if you file, uh, no, he has not filed building permits or any zoning application. If he has anything in mind, I think he's afforded his right here to explain how this uh, new ordinance does, in fact, restrict his ability to use his property. Well, zoning, is a, by its very nature, always restricts what the landowner's ability to use their property. Even if it's an expansive zoning like commercial, you can't put single-family residences normally in that. So zoning is, is always a restriction. Uh, the Paradigm case is, uh, you know, X wants to build a grocery store. Uh, a zoning ordinance is, is immediate, hastily put in uh, uh, to rezone just that property to something that would no longer permit the grocery store. And the re it is clear that that was the sole motive for the ordinance. That's special legislation, and I see nothing like that being alleged well, here. We're but, I think you're really giving a mandatory example. We're talking about a whole new ordinance. Which goes back to our well, special legislation. I don't think has anything to do with whether it's an amendment or whether it's an ordinance from scratch. Uh, I think that's a procedural uh, uh, issue. The question is whether, and it's very unlikely that a whole new ordinance for a municipality is going to be aimed at one particular uh, landowner. Uh, and it's the special legislation is a very narrow area, and I'd point out that the Pennsylvania courts traditionally. Uh, do not like to get involved in mixed motive uh, questions. It's only when, frankly, in that one Philadelphia case where the city council was good enough to recite an impermissible uh, motive in the uh, 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 preamble to the ordinance that you get that kind of thing. It's a very difficult harbor, and I haven't heard what exactly your client wishes to do or is doing that is being frustrated by this. Uh, there's, you know, nonconformist provision, so it can't affect what your client is doing on their property right now, uh, because we have nonconformance provisions in the uh, zoning code. Whatever your client is lawfully doing right now, uh, I'm missing this one. I, I think fundamentally, you're making a summary judgment argument right now that we don't even have a chance to present a record as to how this impacts our property. I, my, my client and. We've complied with uh, board provisions. We provide notice to the witnesses we'd like to present here this evening to explain to the board how this impacts uh, the use of their yeah. property. Yeah, but I, I, still, I still don't understand everything you're saying relative to what you asked us to do, you know, what we're supposed to be hearing here tonight. If, if, I, if I weren't on the board and I were to read what you have and what you're asking tonight, it, it's like you, you're in two different cities. So, I mean, your, your argument saying that everybody assumes what you're going to talk about tonight, I, I don't necessarily, I'm not buying that one. I, you know, I'm reading what you have and what's posted, you know, in the notices in the paper, and I wouldn't, I, you know, I would come here thinking that he found something wrong with the way, the, the way this was delegated and how, how it was, its authority was assigned, not necessarily what's involved within the ordinance. I, I, don't, I don't get that. I don't get from what, what you asked the, this board to hear. That's my problem. I, I still think we're still talking about procedural issues and not anything substantive that's, that's in, your draw, in your request here. And Mr. Toner, I don't think we're saying that we would not hear a, pro, a, a substantive challenge that was properly put before the board. I think, I think we're thinking that it wasn't properly put before the board as a substantive challenge on special legislation grounds. And if you want to put that before the board, through an application that we can advertise, we'll deal with it then. Right now, we only see, despite the, the use of the word substantive in one place in the statement, we only see procedural issues put before the board. Even for sake them. of argument. I, you know, the way I look at this is, the argument you're making, okay, for what, what you feel has been done wrong, okay, is what you're committing against the rest of the, the Radnor Township residents in the fact that you're saying things and asking things that the people who would read these notices in the paper wouldn't glean from that. Right. So you're, you're, you're really doing the same things you're accusing the commissioners of doing. Even assuming, and I, I'm not concluding this fact, but even assuming that special legislation is not part of this notice, Pennsylvania law clearly allows an applicant or a, a party protestant to amend a zoning application in the middle of a hearing. And in terms of notice and the citizenry opportunity to come out, we have a, a whole room full of citizens here tonight 
they clearly knew there was a challenge being made to this ordinance on both procedural and substance because it says in the plain language right there. I think to ask us to spell out every uh, subsect of our argument is asking too much for a zoning protest. No, happens sir. every month. It has to be at least the notice pleading. You have to at least tell us what it is you're, you're alleging. And we, we have to at least have notice of what the subject is. Now we've routinely uh, uh, required applications to be, you know, republished and refiled. If someone says I need a special exception and it turns out there's a variance needed, that's a very different animal and we can't proceed to hear it. The uh, courts are very tough on procedural infractions and failure to, no to uh, uh, you know, do the proper notification. And while we have no jurisdiction to hear procedural uh, challenges to the uh, validity challenges to the enactment of an ordinance, we are charged with following procedure. And candidly, I'm still not fully sure I understand uh, uh, what the the uh, uh, argument is because I never heard an answer to uh, Mr. Cutler's question of. Uh, assuming everything was was done properly and how is the result uh, uh, problematic but I don't think we have uh, the notice uh, that we need to have to go down the road of, of a uh, special legislation argument I don't think the uh, the township tonight through their solicitors presented one case that stands for proposition that when you cite to substantive due process rights substantive validity challenge that you're not making an argument that encompasses a special legislation argument. Now that says that you could, you know, if, to be, to be uh, fair, that would mean that to get anything that you want to bring to uh, before a zoning board at a hearing, uh, all, you can, all you need to plead is this ordinance is, is lousy. I was required. And, and then that would bring everything in that you don't like. I don't think that's the standard in Pennsylvania. Fourteen days before this hearing, I was required to provide Mr. Bauman, according to uh, township procedures, mm -hmm. with a copy of a memorandum of law mm -hmm. or special legislations written yep. as one of my headings. I have cases cited. I mean, this, this matter was clearly that's, that's not, within the knowledge of the township. That's true, but it wasn't advertised. It's not part of the application. It's not part either. of the application. And, and quite frankly, I didn't get this memorandum till tonight. It, it was filed here on the 28th of December, but you, you certainly have my address, Mr. Toner, so please send things to me in the future. The substantive issue in this appeal in Addendum A, here's what it says. The last sentence, board commissioners violate the procedural and substantive due process rights of the applicant herewith and all other citizens of Radnor Township by unlawfully delegating to an unrepresentative and undemocratic steering committee its planning and legislative functions. That, that's a, that is not special legislation. That's a procedural issue. So on one hand, he's calling it substantive, but his example is procedural. There's nothing else in here that will lead anyone, anyone reading the legal ad, and part of the procedural issues that the state's been trying to address are things like conditional uses and special exceptions that don't get properly advertised. So um, there's a procedural issue with the ad before this board could proceed with anything that hasn't spelled out what the grounds are. Um, At a minimum, I would like um, the record held open so we can submit a legal argument whether a special or whether this notice is proper to raise the issue of special legislation. Can we do that, John? We we could uh, we we can certainly uh, uh, continue uh, the matter uh, and allow briefs to be uh, memoranda of law to be submitted. Uh, uh, I'm wondering whether the applicant would be better served to just uh, if it you know. I don't think you've got the substantive uh, challenge here in this appeal as before us, and uh, whether you'd be better off filing another appeal that had that. Right, we wouldn't rule on that question until the next hearing, and you'd be better off just filing a new notice, and we would address it on the merits then. Not only that, it would get advertised properly, so that there would be no, you know, there'd be no misunderstanding as to why you're here. I mean, many times, many times applicants have. Uh, change change course in the middle of an appeal and you know they've been denied and they go back and start again you know it, it's it's been that that's the history this this board has taken over the 13 years i've been on it you know and from what i understand what they've done in the past 
I, it just seems as though we're going around in a circle here. Um, and you know, your best bet is, I think, just to refile and, and do it the proper way. Well, in my opinion, I would be opposed to refiling, but if we want to keep the record open, and we'll re-advertise the hearing. Can we have it both ways? Well, I mean, you could amend the application uh, and get the advertisement to uh, set forth exactly the challenges uh, you're going to make. And whether that's done as an amendment or a new application, to me, uh, doesn't matter uh, a huge amount. Uh, 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 and I'm not sure exactly how the filing fees come in. That's not the board's province. Uh, the township charges those. I, I, I'm, not, Mr. Turner, I'm, not, I'm not sure why you would want to leave this open. I, 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 if it were me, it would seem to be better to get rid of the ambiguity that we have in, in your current appeal and get it right so that, so that we as a board can pass judgment properly and not be clouded with words in here that, that really kind of put us in the wrong direction. You know, the procedural stuff, I think there's, you know, acknowledgement on your part as well as the townships that uh, to the extent it's truly a procedural issue, we haven't got the authority to hear it. And we've got a notification which, frankly, to me, uh, uh, as I read it, uh, is a litany of procedural issues. So we haven't got jurisdiction uh, uh, because of these new amendments to the MPC. So if it's a substantive challenge, uh, uh, I think a new uh, application, a new appeal, and whether it's an amendment or a new application, it's going to be a new application because uh, everything that's in there now, in my view, is going to come out and be replaced by, uh, uh, you know, allegations with some provisions uh, as to what's wrong with this. Uh, in other words, the how is going to go away, and the result is going to have to be uh, put in, in, you know, with reasonable specificity as to why the result is, unac is unacceptable or illegal. Well, our, our preference is to keep the matter open and republish with the specific reference, if that's what the board so, is so inclined, to special legislation and not file a new matter. Well, I, I would object to that. Um, I've got a little bit of a concern about it's been an application filed. This is the first hearing. You have an obligation to make a decision within 45 days. I suppose we could stipulate to something on the record, but if everything in here is procedural, and it seems that Mr. Um, Toner has stipulated to that, then I'd like to see okay. this application either withdrawn or a final decision on this. Um, to leave this open just raises the possibility of something falling through the cracks. Um, and if this board believes that everything in here is procedural, I see no reason to keep this open at all. Um, if he's going to amend it, he can very simply, he can, he can withdraw and he can file a new application. Um, that's as easy as him amending something that's left open. So I, I would have an issue with leaving this open. I think that there needs to be a final decision on this if the board believes that everything in this application is procedural and that it's, you don't have the jurisdiction. My motion on behalf of the township is that you don't have jurisdiction on anything that's in this application and anything that's been advertised at this point. Okay. Um, Mr. Rice's conclusion is just, it's premature. We have the right to present testimony to substantiate a special legislation argument. Uh, I think the board's already can come to the conclusion that special legislation, in fact, would be a substantive issue entirely within its jurisdiction, and in fact, not within the jurisdiction of the Court of Common Pleas. So we have presented an appeal to the body, which we believe is probably vested with jurisdiction for substantive matters. And I would like, if the board is so inclined to republish and specifically reference special legislation, although I'm not conceding the fact our uh, notice is not sufficient, but if that's what's need be, as opposed to refining a whole new matter, going through all the other attendant issues. Okay. Well, before the board is a motion, uh, by the township to dismiss the appeal in all respects on the grounds that it is, raises solely procedural uh, matters. Um, do we need a second for that motion? Well, no, it's a, yeah, I think that's, well, you would have to vote. It's but the motion that you made. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Um, I would vote to grant the motion. I believe that the 
application raises only procedural issues as it's currently uh, as it's drafted uh, and I it's my understanding uh, based on my review of the MPC that we're without jurisdiction to uh, hear those matters Noah yeah I, I would vote the same way and clearly stating that it's without prejudice to your right to refile a, a new application raising substantive issues that we have jurisdiction over and we'll consider it as we're supposed to. Okay. Peter? I, 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 you sure you don't want to withdraw this, right? I'm positive. You sure of that? I, I concur with the other two gentlemen. Peter, what do you think? I concur. And Cora? Okay. Uh, we're going to dismiss your, uh, your application. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.